Hello, Gronk. How have you been? Well, Mr. Director, has it been a year already? It's a fine morning, is it not, sir? A beautiful morning. The crops are looking very good. I trust they will be ready for festival. Yes, and it will soon be upon us. We hope that he who lives in the forest will be pleased with our offering this year again. Yes, yes indeed. I'm sure from the looks of it, he will be pleased. Without him we will have no food, no peace, no hope. It is because of him that we enjoy our existence. Always remember that. Good morning, Brack. You have a very fine selection here this morning. I hope that this is not all of your wares, and that you have saved enough for festival. Oh yes, I most certainly have, and the best that I have to offer. Just like I have every year, Mr. Director. That's good, that's good. He who lives in the forest would be very displeased if even a small part of the offering is not the best we have to give to him. Ah, Mrs. Jark, it looks as if you're preparing your famous stew once again. I am sure the one who watches over us will be very pleased with your offering. It's always an honour to see you, Mr. Director. I trust you have been well this year. Yes, this is my special stew. I just hope that I've made enough to satisfy he who lives in the forest. Well, Mrs. Jark, it is predicted to be a very long winter this year. I would suggest that you make three times as much for our master. Well, um, well, yes, I suppose I could. But it's just that. Well, you know, I have other things to attend to also. Now, now, Mrs. Jock, you'd not want it known that the reason for all of the terrible things that might happen to the village over the course of the next year were because of your lack of ambition to serve, would you? Oh, no, no, sir. I definitely would not want that. I'll get right on it, sir. I'll move as fast as I can. Yes, that's it, good lady. So with vigour, that's what the master desires. I trust you have the ale prepared for festival. Good, sir. Yes, indeed, Mr. Director. Ten barrels of my best, just like last year. Make it twenty. Um, yes, sir. Of course, sir. I'll get right on it. Only the freshest bread the festival. Mr. Blop, only the freshest. Yes, Mr. Director. Anything you say, sir. Good people of Groundswell. You have all been attending the weekly meeting set upon you many years ago by he who lives in the forest. But it has been noted that some have decided against this time on a tradition. You all remember well what happened when your ancestors disobeyed the directives placed upon you. All of you remember what happened when your grandparents attempted to revolt against the one who provides so well for you. How the crops began to disappear. How your food ran short because of the unseen ones in the night, who were stealing from you that which you worked so hard to grow. Good people, trusted servants, do not let this happen to you again. These malefactors who are refusing to submit to he who lives in the forest must be brought before the tribunal and pay for what they have done. If not, all of you will pay. The rules are simple. They always have been. Give a portion of what you have to him who protects you. To him who can guarantee your passage into the Eternal. Find these usurpers and bring them to me. Do not allow this new doctrine or nonsense to spread any further, or all of you will find yourself in the same place that many of those who came before you did, without hope today and for all eternity. But where did you get the book? It was left here by one of the travelers long, long ago. 
given to our forefathers in the hope that it would bring many to the knowledge of the truth. But it can't be that simple. We have always been taught that works are the only way to eternity, that we must offer great sacrifices to be who lit in the woods, that the director was the only one who could show us the way to him. If everything in the book is the truth, then everything that we have been told is a lie. Yes, everything that we have been told is a lie meant to keep us in bondage to a religious system that can never offer us any hope. Remember what the words in Ephesians said, For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. All these nights of meeting here have led me finally to a conclusion that the book speaks the truth, that what we have been taught all these generations is a lie. Tell me, what must I do to be saved? Praise God, my friend. Praise God. Confess you are a sinner to the Lord. Repent of your sins. Ask the Lord Jesus Christ to forgive you. Ask Him with all your heart, with all your strength, might, and soul, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Come before your provider, bring your offerings, prostrate yourselves before the one you serve, recite the well-known mantras, ask for forgiveness, and it will be granted. Kneel before me, for I am the one that gives you all you need. I am the only one who can guarantee your eternal salvation. After you have spent sufficient time being purged of your sins in the place of darkness, I am your provider. I am your only refuge. I am the reason for your existence. I am your only hope. I can't just walk away from them. I can't just leave them down there. They are my friends and family. We won't. We will live and work with them. We will reach all that we can with the truth of the Word of God. And we will leave it in His hands as to who He will be merciful to. You have denied the Church and you will suffer for it. We have been shown the truths of the Word of God, and by His mercies, we will reveal the truth to all who will listen. Then you will suffer for your insubordination.